could Then I would Take back all the crazy things I've done I don't know how Cause I'm just a man Living my life on the run Feels like I've been chasing the sun When the light comes up in the morning Pack my bags and I'm gone Be on the I'll be chasing the sun Have you ever seen When the morning glow Hits the blues and hits the green Time is my own And I'm a part of everything I'm always chasing the sun When the light goes down in the evening Sleeping sound on the swag from one On the road again tomorrow I'll be chasing the sun When the light comes up in the morning Pack my bags and I'm gone Be on the road again tomorrow I'll be chasing Yes, I'll be chasing yeah, I'll be chasing the sun Welcome to the show, Andy. It is great having you on. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. What was that song we just heard? That was my original song, um, Chasing the Sun, which I wrote with the beautiful, uh, amazingly talented Lynn Botel. She's like the darling of country music here in Australia. Um, she's got a bunch of golden guitars at home. And um, I was lucky enough to spend some time with her and um, we wrote that song together. And I guess it's kind of about like my journey as as an artist, you know, like I'm constantly chasing something, you know, chasing the dream. So for me, the sun was the reference. Um, and it kind of reflects my personality as well. You know, I'm a bit of a kind of free loving person. So um, yeah, and it's one of my favorite songs to play for sure. Right. Yeah, it was really lovely. It sounds a bit like the pursuit of happiness. Is a theme there. Uh, yeah, true, true. And, um, you know, everyone's searching for that in their life, aren't they? Like everyone wants happiness and, and they for want sure. kind of like the, the greener grass at some stage. So hopefully the listener can or whoever's listening, listening to the song can take that with them and um, interpret that in their own life, which would be really cool. And that's why I do it. You know, that's why I make music, I guess. Definitely. So for those of us who don't know, Andy, you're a country artist. Yes. Can you tell me anything else about yourself? So I am a a country Americana kind of alternative 
guy <laughs> or artist. Um, and for me, you know, like music is something that's been around me my whole life. Um, it's something that's kind of got me through some really kind of dark times in my life and happy times in my life. Um, so I'm just so lucky that it's followed me around and I'm still doing it, you know, um, and I'm still chasing my dream, which is kind of something that I'm really proud of and something that I just want to keep doing. Um, but for me, I grew up surrounded by music. My grandmother was an opera singer, a professional opera singer. Um, so that kind of, you know, helped. And I remember like talking to her as a kid when I wanted to sing and she was really supportive and all my cousins can play like some kind of musical instrument, but my fam, like my mom and dad are t like terrible. They have no musical <laughs> abilities at all, but they had some really great, um, choices of, of records. So that really stuck with okay. me. And Good taste is something. Yeah. So that, you know, I can bl blame them for that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have you got any opera in you? Um, you know, what's funny. Uh, my mom tried to get me to do opera when I was a kid. So I used to go and <laughs> sing at like opera of Stefford's and stuff like that. And I felt so awkward, you know, because like I'm this little kid um, and I was a little bit chubbier <laughs> back then. Okay. So um, for me, it was kind of like, yeah, I don't think, I loved the music side of it, but it wasn't something that I gravitated to. Um, but I just kind of gravitated more towards popular music at that, that younger age. You know, it kind of just rang yeah. home, more contemporary stuff. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. But you say you do Americana as well, which yes. is one of your genres. Can you explain yeah. that a bit? Yeah, Americana f is a weird genre because nobody <laughs> really knows what it is. Um, but it's cool because it's like a whole bunch of different things. You know, it's like country music it's blues music it's um you know american style of music um all kind of thrown into one bucket and stirred around and then you know there's so many different sounds and different um styles that come out of americana but for me you know i'd listen to some really cool americana artists like um Bob Dylan, who who was an amazing storyteller, um, who still is, you know, he's still around. The Eagles, um, even like Dolly Parton, she's obviously country, but she does a lot of different styles. Um, but I also listen to like, you know, some more contemporary stuff like Ryan Adams, who um, I used to listen to like religiously all the time kind of for the past 10 years. So. And that's Ryan Adams, not to be confused with Brian. <laughs> yeah. I do a lot of radio interviews and they're like, Brian, I'm like, no, Ryan, <laughs> Brian, he's, the, he's like the cool Americana guy. He's like got a really cool vibe. And he's a, if I could write a song as good as him, I would just, you know, you'd be heading in the right direction. So. Right. Yeah. And is there some sort of blend with Americana and Australian country? I guess I'm trying to find that blend. You know, I'm trying to find my own um, sound and my own, way in the industry you know like I, I don't really want to follow a certain genre and be put into a box and be pigeonholed but you know I am a country artist and I, I play at country music festivals and um, I guess in Australia that Americana banner falls you know within that country country scene because Americana is not a huge scene here in Australia so um, yeah that's kind of where it is I guess here but for me you know my sound is definitely different to uh, what you hear on Australian country radio, if, if you're listening to, you know, Lee Kernigan or um, some of these kind of bigger Australian acts, um, my sound's a little bit different, but I, I kind of like that because it makes me stand out a little bit. Right. I mean, speaking of radio, you've done quite a lot of radio interviews and appearances and um, yeah. you have many awards, more than most people. <laughs> Safe to <laughs> say that. My big now, but yeah, thank you. <laughs> Do you um, consider any to be your mm. maybe top biggest achievement musically? Yeah. I guess like um, the first time I heard my song on the radio, that was kind of like a pinch myself moment. Right. Um, and it's kind of weird now because I have like a lot of family and friends will call me up and go, oh, I just heard your song on the radio or, you know, I was watching ABC and I, and I, I heard your song or I was watching CMT and I heard your song. But now because it happens so often, I've got so used to it. Um, but I think, you know, I won – I've won a few kind of awards here in Australia. I've been nominated for some great awards as well. I was actually a finalist for um, MCOS, the APRA MCOS New Songwriter of the Year Award in 2019. So I was a finalist. I didn't actually win, but to be nominated and to be like in that final kind of basket was like, holy moly, like, yeah. you know, people like what I do. Like you actually like my music. So yeah. that was really cool. And that was, that kind of pushed me in, you know, it's pushed me 
in, in the right direction and really want really giving me that fire to um, work through what I want and, and where I'm heading. Um, but yeah, I won um, a national busking championship award, which was really cool. Um, I know a few really cool artists have won, won that award. Um, Tones and I, Okay, she's like one of the big ones that won that. So yeah, um, yeah that was kind of cool as well. And have you done a lot of busking? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love busking. <laughs> like, I do. Yeah, I go up to Tamworth, and um, you know, I played some shows up there last year. Oh, obviously not last year because of what happened with this pandemic. But the year before, I think I did like eighteen shows in Tamworth. But the funnest ones were out on the street busking. Oh yeah, because you just don't know who's going to walk past. You've got right. like all these cool artists like stopping and listening. You know, like Casey Chambers or someone kind of cool. So I think for me, busking is is a lot of fun, and I think I'll keep doing it even. The more success I get, that's not going to stop me. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I guess anything can happen on the streets, right? Well, that's what they say. <laughs> that's what they say. And like, to be honest with you, you know, you end up making sometimes more money out, out busking than what you would do doing a show. So it's kind of cool, you know. You wouldn't like, think that. You wouldn't think that. But I have in the past, you know, there's been moments where <laughs> I've been out busking and I shouldn't say this, but like my mum would walk past and put a $50 note in. <laughs> so and everyone oh, would be cheating. like, oh my God, he got a $50 <laughs> note. And then everyone would start putting it in. Wow. So yeah, thanks mum for that. That but, is a good tip. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great tip. And yeah, like especially in Tamworth, you know, you've got all these young kids that are, doing busking and and um you know they're following their dream and and they're they're getting out there and they're giving it a go so it's cool to see and you know i always throw them you know whatever i've got so, right, yeah. right. <laughs> now your next song what's that called so it's a cover it's called someone you loved I fear there's no one to save me It's all or nothing Really got a way Driving me crazy I need somebody to heal Somebody to know Somebody to have Oh, somebody to hold And it's easy to say but it's never the same Guess I kinda locked away And numbed all the pain And now my day bleeds Into nightfall And you're not here To get me through it all I let my guard down And you pulled the rug I was getting kinda used to Going under, and this time I fear there's no one but you. It's all or nothing. We have loving's got me sleeping without you. I need somebody to know, somebody to hear, somebody to hold on to know how it feels. But it's easy to say. Never the same. Guess I kinda locked away and numbed all the pain, and now my day bleeds into nightfall, and you're not here to get me through it all. I let my guard down, and you pulled the rug. I was getting kinda used to being someone you love. When it hurts sometimes and I fall into your arms I'll be safe and sound till you come back around And now my day bleeds into nightfall And you're not here to get me through it all I let my guard down and you pull the
Thanks so much, Andy, for that song. That was just magical. Thank What's you. it called again? Someone You Loved. Someone You Loved. Yeah. Can you tell me about it? So I only really, I've, I mean, I've heard the song before on the radio and stuff, but um, I only started playing it a couple of weeks ago and I really gravitated towards it because the lyrics are just so beautiful and I can relate to them, you know, um, obviously uh, being a, a broken relationship and I do write a lot about that. I've kind of got a bit of a name for myself writing all these sad, <laughs> broken heart, hearted love songs. So um, yeah, I just really enjoy, I really loved that song and I, re- I wanted to add it to my set um, and add a bit of a different vibe to the original um, kind of make it a little bit more of my own. And I usually do that with a lot of covers. Like I'll take, you know, like a Tina Turner song or something like that and I'll try and just craft it and do it my own way. So Right. So for that reason, yeah. do you kind of prefer covers to writing originals or how do you feel about that? Um, I mean, I love playing covers. You know, when you're doing a live show um, for four hours, you th- obviously throw a lot of covers <laughs> in there. Um, but I think... You know, at this point in my career, I'd, I'd love to be able to just do my original stuff. That's where I want to head with it for sure. Um, but you can't always rely on, on your original stuff at, at my point at this point. So, yeah, I still love doing covers. And, um, you know, you learn different techniques and different things by listening to covers. So it's important anyway as a musician for sure. Right. You learn as you go, I suppose. You do. Like, you know, I'm still learning. Like, you know, it's just like life. Life's like a huge learning curve you know yeah never stop you never stop learning and I think for me getting older and um kind of understanding who I am as a human and what I'm capable of doing and um is really helping me with my music and um you know I've got this kind of confidence that I probably didn't have when I was like you know 19 or 18 years old so yeah it's a huge learning curve for sure right and you have written a lot of originals under COVID is that right I have, yeah. I mean, I've like I've released a full album which had ten songs on in two thousand eighteen, and a new EP, an EP last year which had another five songs on it. And this year, I've released three singles. Um, but during COVID, I, I wrote like fifteen songs. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, That's, it kept me like out of trouble. You were very productive. Yeah, I was just you know I was, I was thinking like. I should be really productive in this time. Like I don't want to be sitting at home and, you know, twiddling my thumbs going, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Um, So I just made sure that I really focused on writing music and I released my EP during that time, Chasing the Sun, which was uh, the title track of the EP. Um, And I'd previously recorded that with an amazing artist, Shane Nicholson, who literally has won a bunch of golden guitars and a whole bunch of ARIA awards and stuff. So being at his house in his studio, I stayed there for like two weeks just before this COVID thing happened. And it was kind of surreal, you know, like working with somebody at his level. Um, But I knew what he's capable of doing. So that's why I went to him with this EP. And um, it did really well for me, this EP. Um, I had like three singles on their chart on the Australian radio charts, airplay charts. Um, plus it was like number five on, um, the country album iTunes charts and wow. Yeah. So it did pretty good. Like yeah. I was pretty happy with, with the results and yeah. And do you credit Shane Nicholson for a lot of the help as well? I credit Shane for the sound. Yeah. The sound of the album. Definitely. He's done, he done a great job, but the cool thing with Shane, like he's got this ability of like adding his flavor to what you've got and what you do, but not changing you. Right. Like he didn't change all the structure of the songs and go, no, this work will work better. But he worked with what I wanted and my vision. Um, the actual EP has, has so two of the, three of the songs on there are co-writes. So Lynn Motel, who was um, Chasing the Sun. And then I wrote a um, song on there, two songs with another country artist. His name's David Carter from a band called Carter and Carter. And they've been around forever. Um, so it was cool to do some co-writes as well. Yeah, sounds like you've worked with quite a few big names. Some big Australian country names, yeah, which is kind of cool, you know, like um, you learn from them. You know, I've got this thing where you need I, – I look at my life where I need to surround myself with people that are better than me right. so I can constantly like strive for, for something better. So, yeah, it's really cool to be able to work with them and um, I'm so grateful and it's like, you know, you kind of look at it like – especially when I did my first co-write with, with a big artist, it's like – I was a bit 
like deer in headlights, you know. It was yeah. a bit of a fangirly yeah. kind of moment. <laughs> but now it's just so natural because I've done it with so many of them. So, yeah. I mean, just like you get used to hearing your voice on the radio, right? Yeah, true. You do. You do. And These things um, become natural. True, true. I think hearing your voice for the first time, your talking voice is weird because <laughs> you're like, do I actually sound that way? <laughs> but, yeah, you, you, you get more confident with it as you go and more you do. But, um. Yeah. yeah. And are you quite, you must be quite confident now singing in live gigs on stage in front yeah. of big crowds. I am confident. Yeah. But like, I'm still really nervous, like as well, I'm still that little boy kind of going, oh my <laughs> God, I'm so scared. But yeah, I, I, I love the adrenaline of it all. Um, I love, like, I love being able to show people that I can, you know, create something and, um, you know, that I've, I'm creating a life's work of work. That, that's why I do it. Right. But yeah. Right. Have you had anything embarrassing happen to you during a live performance? I have, yes. <laughs> um, I'd probably say, well, uh, my fly was undone for about 40 minutes of one of my performances. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, kidding. which is really weird. And now I'm, well, it was, it was pretty embarrassing, but now I'm very like cautious <laughs> about doing my fly up. Um, I had to, I was like, I was busting for the toilet, to be honest, before okay. I went up on stage. So I went to the bathroom and then I forgot to do the fly up and stood in front of a packed audience with my fly undone. You know, you learn from those mistakes. I did have undies on, so it wasn't too bad. <laughs> Not too bad. It ended really badly, but yeah. You live and you learn, I guess. You live and you learn. And my mum was the one to point that out, so. Wow. That, <laughs> that you won't forget that anytime soon. I, I don't think I will, no. And she won't either, but yeah. <laughs> right. And um, do you have anything new on the horizon? Anything coming up? Yeah, I've got some cool things happening this year. Um, I'm going on a national tour in September. Um, well, it's an East Coast tour, but I'm going on a tour with a friend of mine called Dan Higgins, who is a country folk artist. And we're doing uh, about 17 shows from Toowoomba down to Victoria, um, which would be fun. And it's a whole month of like being on the road, me and Dan. Um, we're going to take a camera and film all of our stupidity <laughs> and um, film our you know, our shows and stuff. And we've got a bunch of artists jumping on. Um, Della Harris, who's in Melbourne, Lucy Tiger in Sydney, um, Ian Burns here in New South Wales as well. Um, Lisa DeAngelis here up in Brisbane. So yeah, looking really looking forward to that. I'm working on a new album uh, at the moment and I've got a new single coming out pretty soon. I've got a single currently in the Australian Airplay charts. Um, was that number two last week? So um, yeah, I've got so much happening. Sometimes I kind yeah, of Yeah, you have a lot on your plate. Yeah, you? what am I thinking? But I love being busy, you know. <laughs> yeah, it well, sounds like you're plenty busy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, true, true. So are you going to put some of that stuff on social media? I am, yeah. So social media is like my lifeline or as an artist, you know. So yeah. you put everything on there these days, don't you? Right. <laughs> like <laughs> what you had for breakfast, you know, who you spoke to at lunchtime. Um, for me, it's a, it's an outlet for, from, to get my music out there. So, yeah, I've got um, – so it's at Andy Panko if anyone wants to follow me, obviously Instagram and um, – Twitter, Facebook, all those usual suspects. Plus, you know, YouTube, I've got a bunch of music videos up there. Mm -hmm. So if you guys want to jump on and look at those, Check please do. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Thanks sure. for that, Andy. Before we wrap up, what is your last song? So the last song I perform will be performing, excuse me, is a song I wrote called The Biggest Hearts Can Break. And it is a song that I wrote about my journey as a musician. And, um, you know, be, and it's kind of like, for anyone out there that's ever been told, you know, that maybe you're not good enough or, you know, you don't give up your day job or that kind of thing. So I guess it's like the songs about, you know, be careful what you say to people because it can really affect the way that they live their life and the way that they, um, their journey is, um, impacted. So that's the song. I've been told that my day would come I've been told that my race was run Sometimes I get a little lost along the way And I feel deep, deep. I've been told that my heart would never mend I would never pick up the pieces again 
Once your word is broken by a lie You can lose your smile The biggest hearts can break Shattered by what I say The brightest lives can lose the flame They're always in the dark It can break the biggest hearts Break the biggest heart. What people say can take away your hope. Their words can sink into your skin and your bones. Leave a mark, a stain on your soul, and you can't wash it out. Now I the biggest hearts You've been told that your day would come You've been told that your race was run And do you ever get lost along the way Do you feel biggest hearts can break The biggest hearts can break The biggest hearts can break And the biggest hearts can break